Hey, let's talk about relighting the engine in flight. Look, part of acquiring a new type rating is doing the engine in-flight relight procedure. Typically, we do this at the status page on the ECAM. So when we get to the status, you'll say, stop ECAM. We do our after takeoff checklist. OK, assuming we just took off on a V1 cut, right? Then you're going to do the engine in-flight relight. Now, the main thing with the engine relight, OK, and I have it here on the electronic uh, flight bag, if you will, the QRH. Um, when you go through this relight, there's various elements to this, one of which is obviously max altitude. We have a table, engine master off, thrust lever affected engine idle, engine mode select ignition, cross bleed open. This is a repeater of what was already on the primary failure section of the ECAM. We keep on working our way down. We get to wing any ice off, engine master switch, affected engine on, engine parameters, N2 EGT monitor, and look at what it says here, automatic start abort not available. Let me read that again, extremely important here. Automatic start abort is not available. So be aware that unlike the procedure for auto start on the ground, the crew must take appropriate action in case of an abnormal start. Look, when you go to put the master switch on, you want to ensure that you don't simply place it on at the time that the procedure tells us to do, but rather we read past it first. So when you get to engine master on, realize you're adding fuel to a fire, okay? So let me not put that on real quick. Let me just read through the rest of it to see what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna put that master switch on. I'm gonna check my engine parameters. When idle is reached, engine mode select normal, TCAS goes back to TA. Okay, I read past it just a little bit to make sure I know what I'm looking for. I wanna see that um, I monitor N2. If, if uncertain about successful relay, I can check the thrust lever. And of course, automatic start abort not available. So I just read past a little bit to ensure that when I place the master switch on, I'm not deviating focus over to the QRH or the uh, COM procedure or as appropriate for your company. You're not looking at that document that tells you to do the relight and then you put the master switch on and then instead of looking at your engine warning display, looking at EGT, looking at N2 parameters, looking at fuel flow, looking at oil pressure, instead of looking at all these things, you're over here with your head in a book because at that point, it's very likely your instructor and or examiner realizes, oops, they're not watching for a hot start. Remember, you have no aborted start capability. You become the FADEC. You have to turn the master switch off to cut the fuel flow. And if you're not paying attention, a hot start may sneak up on you very quick. So on the in-flight start, be sure that you are looking at your engine parameters. Read pass that point of master lever on so that you can stay focused and engaged on the actual engine start. We're going to talk about the single engine ILS here in the next video. Hope you found value here. If you need any, for any reason to go back and repeat, push play and learn it. As always, the easy way with J&J &J here at One Step Prep.